Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about a realistic price prediction for Polkadot in this bull market. If you're not familiar, Polkadot is a layer zero protocol. That means it is a protocol on which layer ones actually build on top of it. And that grants benefits like shared security and also native interoperability. Basically, any layer one protocol that builds on top of Polkadot can directly speak to any other layer one that's built on top of it very easily and efficiently. So DOT is the native token of Polkadot, and it has been on a bit of a moon mission ever since the election. We're up currently 126%, and we were up as much as 180% at the high of today before we have now retraced. So the question I think on a lot of people's minds is how high could Polkadot go this bull market? It's shown some remarkable early strength, but what is the ultimate target we might expect from it? So what I want to do in this video is leverage some knowledge that we can gain by actually looking at how DOT relates to Bitcoin. So of course, Bitcoin is the driver of the crypto market. If you've been around the market long enough, you know Bitcoin tends to lead the way. If it's doing well, the rest of the market does well. If Bitcoin does poorly, the rest of the market does poorly. So a lot of information can be gained by knowing where Bitcoin is and that can tell us something about where we might expect another asset like DOT to be. So there are a few different ways you can leverage this information. I'll leave a link in the description to an earlier video I made where I use a machine learning approach to make a prediction about DOT's price. In this video, I wanna leverage something a little bit different. So one of the things that is always useful to look at is how is a given asset being valued relative to Bitcoin? So if you're on a site like TradingView, you can just directly divide the price of an asset like DOT against the Bitcoin price and this gives you the value of DOT relative to Bitcoin. So this chart tells you is a few things. First off, it tells you about relative performance. So if it's going up, that means DOT is outperforming relative to Bitcoin. And if it's going down, that means Bitcoin's outperforming relative to DOT. So you can see for most of DOT's history, Bitcoin has actually been outperforming it by a pretty large margin. But what's useful about this is that we can look at prior bull markets and say, okay, at this point in the top of the last bull market, where were people valuing DOT relative to Bitcoin? You can see that they were valuing it quite a bit higher at the top of the last bull market from where it is right now. So that means that if we go into a full bull market and if DOT is able to reclaim its former glory against Bitcoin, it actually has a lot of room it will be making up, a lot of ground it'll be making up against Bitcoin. And then if we do make an assumption that it can get anywhere close to where it was last cycle, that lets us then get an idea of where its price would be if it can reclaim that former glory. So that's what I'm gonna do in this approach. I'm gonna take a look at this value of DOT relative to Bitcoin, and we're gonna do some simulations to see where we'd expect DOT to be at the top of a new bull market if you reclaim that former valuation. All right, so let's break down the approach that I took. So this is a simulation-based approach. And basically the idea is that we don't know what the answer is gonna be in terms of how high Bitcoin can get this cycle. And then also we don't know at what level people are gonna be valuing DOT relative to Bitcoin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick some plausible ranges for inputs and then run a bunch of simulations to see what would happen in different hypothetical worlds. So for Bitcoin's price, we're gonna assume that it's gonna be somewhere for the cycle top this time around, somewhere between the current all-time high to put in around 99K and then all the way up to 345K. I think most people would put their top end targets for Bitcoin this cycle somewhere in this range. You may have higher or lower targets or within this range. I'm gonna show you some other things later on where you can kind of see where things would be based on whatever assumption you make regarding that. We're also gonna pick a dot Bitcoin ratio from the last bull market. So basically we're gonna say the best information we have about how the market values dot versus Bitcoin in a bull market is the last bull market we have. It's really the only data we have in a full on bull market. So that's why we're gonna use data from the 2021 bull market and we're going to just pull a dot Bitcoin ratio from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to randomly sample a Bitcoin price within this range. And then we're also going to be randomly sampling a dot Bitcoin ratio from the last bull market. And then we're going to use that information to calculate what is dots predicted price at a given Bitcoin price and a given ratio. We're then going to repeat that 5,000 times. And we're just going to keep recording what is the predicted dot price. And what that'll give us is a distribution of predicted dot prices that we can look at the average, we can look at the median, so on and so forth to get a general idea of what might be realistic if we end up going on this full bull market, 
Bitcoin gets to a higher all-time high, then the market values DOT relative to Bitcoin somewhere in the ballpark of where it did last cycle. So these are the top line results from this analysis. See, the mean predicted price for DOT is a whopping $130, median $125. We can also look at percentiles, and basically this means that 10% of the simulations fell below this number, 90% fell above. So 90% were above $67. 90th percentile is the opposite. 10% of the simulations were above, 90% were below, $202. So these are very bullish numbers. And we just look at the distribution directly. So here's the median, 125, half fell below, half fell above. And you see a bit of a longer tail over here on the top end, some really extreme outliers on the very bullish side. But of course, some also more bearish outlooks as well, down below $20. So that's all well and good, but one of the things that you might say is, okay, but I don't think necessarily that Bitcoin's gonna get to anywhere close to, if we just look at what we're pulling from here, 345K. What if I think it's gonna tap out at 120, 140? What would things look like in that situation? So what we can actually do is break things down by looking at the inputs and then looking at what the predicted dot price would be in this scatter plot that I put together, which I think is a really nice way of visualizing these results and where this distribution comes from based on the inputs. So on the x-axis is this hypothetical Bitcoin price, again, starting from the current all-time high at around 99K, going all the way up to just under 350K. And then the color coding of the dots is the dot Bitcoin ratio. So these are all pulled from the last bull market. So basically uh, 2021 throughout that entire year, more or less, that's where these are coming from. So all the way at the low end are these blue dots. If the market only ever gets to a point where it values dot at the lower end of the last bull market, all the way up to the top, which is if the market values dot as much as it did at the highest point last cycle. So what you'll see is that the relationship between Bitcoin's price and the predicted dot price really depends on this ratio. At what level does the market end up deciding to value dot relative to Bitcoin? So if you think that DOT is unlikely to reclaim much of its former glory against Bitcoin and is down on this end, you'll be looking down at these blue dots here. So that's where even if Bitcoin starts going on a massive run, you're seeing it's only having a relatively small impact on what you'd expect DOT's price to be. If you think instead that the market's going to DOT Bitcoin really highly relative to Bitcoin or at the highest level that it did in the last cycle, you'd be looking at these top levels all the way up here as being your targets. And if you think it's somewhere in between, that's where you'll fall into these levels as well. So obviously, I'll leave it up to you in terms of which ones of these inputs you think the most sense. And then you can just go ahead and look over here at what the predicted price would be for DOT. And I think there are a few considerations you should make. One of the things that's notable about DOT is there has been a reasonable amount of inflation. DOT has a relatively high inflation rate per year. So you could say that, okay, because there's so much more supply now, you need a lot more demand just to get back up to that. Or the possibility of DOT to get back to the same ratio with Bitcoin might be harder because there's more supply. But on the flip side, you could also say that a lot more money, if we go on a full-on bull market, a lot more money is probably going to flow into crypto this time around than last cycle. So that would actually be pushing the opposite direction, suggesting maybe you can get to a higher DOT Bitcoin ratio. So that's where you can kind of make those determinations for yourself. What world do you think is most likely? And then you can just look at what might the target price be in that type of hypothetical scenario. So that's why I like this analysis because it lets you basically test your different assumptions and say, okay, where would I expect it to be based on what I assume? Okay, so just to wrap up, I want to put into perspective how much of a return we'd expect from current levels for DOT if we did get up to that mean price from all of those different simulations that I just showed you. And what it would be is actually pretty impressive. It'd be a 1400% move to the upside well above the prior all-time high at around 54, 55 dollars. Now, again, it's up to you to decide if you think that those mean values are the best ones to be looking at. If you think that Bitcoin's not going to go as high and that DOT's not going to be able to reclaim much of its former glory against Bitcoin, you wouldn't expect it to be this high. You'd probably be on the lower end of that distribution of where you think things would be. If you're more bullish, you'd actually expect it to be higher. But I just wanted to put this out there is this of all the simulations that I did is where you would end up. So this is obviously very bullish outlook. But one thing that's also important to note is that if we did get into a situation where DOT was ripping up to these levels, what's going to happen, what always happens in the crypto space is that everyone will keep moving their price target. Someone who once predicted DOT to 100 will then change it to be DOT to 1000 and so on and so forth. They'll keep increasing it. And when you're in the middle of that emotion and that hype, 
and that excitement, it's really easy to follow along with that to say, oh, if we made it to 100, then obviously we're going to make it to 1,000 for all these reasons that you can come up with. But that might be getting detached from reality, detached from data. And so what I like about this analysis is it gives you some hard numbers that are based on actual information, actual data that we know to give yourself guidelines, basically goalposts to look for. And the idea would be that if we were to get up to this point where dots getting up towards this level to really ask yourself, OK, does it make sense for me to be changing my expectations or is it really that this is probably about as good as we can expect? And should I be maybe skeptical of the people who just keep saying higher, higher, higher forever based on really nothing other than emotion? So obviously, it's up to you of how you interpret this data. This is not financial advice. You should make your own opinions. But I think this is a useful analysis to tell us what could be plausible based on a certain framework. In this case, based on how we know DOT performed relative to Bitcoin in the last bull market and what that would mean this time around based on given price targets for Bitcoin. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over an X. A lot of updates for our models and more over there. And go to our website, partydigital.io to see live data from our models, our risk models, our forecast models, our momentum models, and more.